In the previous video, we introduced belts and pulleys, and in particular, we looked at how we could determine the maximum power that can be transmitted with a belt and pulley assembly when various conditions are applied. In this video, we're going to use the same V-belt configuration that we used in the previous video, except instead of determining the power from the known initial tension requirements, we're going to reverse that and we're going to calculate the initial tension requirements in order to achieve a desired power output of 180 kilowatts. Now the equations that we're using here are exactly the same, but we're first going to use the power equation, P equals pi nd times F1 minus F2, and we're going to use that to find F1 minus F2. F1 minus F2 is just going to equal a value, but what we'll have there is one equation with two unknowns. So then what we need to do is use our equation for the force ratio F1 over F2 in order to generate a second equation. Then we'll have two equations with two unknowns. We can determine F1 and F2, and then finally, we can calculate the initial tension requirement using the equation at the top there. So let's begin by finding F1 minus F2 using this equation here that I'm going to call equation one. So using equation one, we know the following. We have a power of 180 kilowatts. Now we need to convert that to watts, so 180,000 equals pi. The rotational speed of our pulley is given as 1620 RPM. But we need to work in radians per second or SI units. In the previous video, we looked at how to convert revolutions per minute to radians per second. And in effect, what we need to do is multiply by the number of radians in a revolution and then divide by the number of seconds in a minute. Therefore, we're going from revolutions per minute into radians per second. We have our diameter of 320 millimeters. Well, we can express that in meters as 0.32. And then we have all of that multiplied by the difference in our tight side tension minus our slack side tension. It's this here, F1 minus F2, that we're trying to find. So let's simplify our right hand side. Our left hand side is going to remain as 180,000. Our right hand side then, multiplying out this section here, becomes 170.5 f1 minus f2. Now note this value here is rounded. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to store that in my calculator and I'm going to recall that full calculator answer in the next stage of my working. So I have f1 minus f2 equals 180,000 divided by 170.547 but when I run this through my calculator, I'm going to use the full calculator answer. So running that through the calculator gives us an answer of 1055.43 newtons. So what we have here is our new equation, and our new equation, F1 minus F2 equals 1055.43. Now I'm going to call that equation, equation two, because we already have equation one for our power. We're going to derive a second equation, which we'll call equation three. And from there, we'll be able to determine the values of both F1 and F2. Note that although we have two unknowns here, we'll have two equations connecting those two unknowns. So let's make a note of equation two at the top, and then we'll continue through to derive our next equation for F1 and F2. Okay, so the way that we're going to determine a new equation in terms of F1 and F2 is using our equation for the force ratio, F1 over F2. We know that F1 over F2 equals e to the power mu theta over sine beta. Therefore, F1 over F2 equals e to the power mu theta, well mu is 0.25, Theta is 192, but recall that we need to convert that into radians. D 
degrees to radians, the conversion factor is 2 pi over 360. The reason for that is because there's 2 pi radians in one revolution and there's 360 degrees in one revolution. The conversion from degrees to radians has been covered in earlier tutorials. We then need to divide that by sine beta or sine 72 degrees. Now as mentioned in the previous video, we can use degrees there so long as we ensure our calculator is in degrees mode or we can use radians ensuring that our calculator is in radians mode. Sine of 72 degrees and sine of the equivalent radians angle will be exactly the same providing the calculator is in the corresponding mode. Now it's all of that fraction that's in the power of the exponential. So we need to take a little bit of care there. Now when we run that through the calculator, we get F1 over F2 equals 2.413. Now before I call that equation 3, I'm going to do one more function and I'm going to multiply each side by F2 to give F1 equals 2.413. F2. What we have there is F1 expressed in terms of F2. We know that F1 is going to be 2.413 times bigger than F2. So let's call that equation 3. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to solve the simultaneous equations 2 and 3 by substitution. So I'm going to substitute F1 from equation 3 into equation 2. What this means in practice is that I'm going to replace F1 in equation 2 with 2.413 F2. So equation 2 becomes 2.413 F2 minus F2 equals 1055.43. Well, if we have 2.413 lots of F2 and we subtract one lot of F2, we're going to be left with 1.413 lots of F2. Recall that F2 is just the same as one lot of F2. And that equals 1055.43. Therefore, F2 equals 1055.43 divided by 1.413, which equals... 746.94 newtons and that's accurate to two decimal places. Okay, this time we're going to make a note of F2 and then we're going to calculate F1. Okay, so now we've found F2, finding F1 is a lot more straightforward. The reason being is we can use equation 2. Equation 2 states that F1 minus F2 equals 1055.43. But we now have a value for F2, 746.94. So F1 minus 746.94 equals 1055.43, meaning F1 equals 1055.43 plus 746.94. 0.94, which equals 1802.37, and that's in newtons. So at the start of the video, we mentioned that what we wanted to determine was our initial tension requirements, F. Well now, calculating F is relatively straightforward, using the equation right at the top of the screen there. F1 plus F2 equals 2F. So therefore, F is just F1 plus F2 over 2. F then is 1802.37 plus F2, which we've just found to be 746.94, all divided by 2, giving us an F value equal to 1, 2, 74.7 newtons, accurate to one decimal place. Now if we refer to our diagram, our initial tension then would have been applied before our pulley started rotating. 
So if the pulley is not rotating, we can disregard our slack side tension and our tight side tension. Instead, we have an initial tension, both above and below the pulley, equal to F, or in this case, the initial tension is 1274.7. Now the important thing to note here is that we're transmitting more power than in the previous example. In the previous example, we were transmitting around 140 kilowatts, but our initial tension this time is 1275 newtons, whereas in the previous example, it was only 945 newtons. What this demonstrates then is if we apply more tension to that belt, we can transmit more power. Now that's exactly what you would expect because by applying a greater initial tension, the likelihood that the belt is going to slip on the pulley here is reduced. So in conclusion, we can transmit more power if we have a greater initial tension placed on the belt. Naturally, we need to ensure that the belt can cope with the larger tension requirements because here we see the maximum tension rising to 1802.4 newtons in the tight side of the belt.